Hey, we're having some uh, technical difficulties today. We are going to work with what we got. Hey, thanks for joining me. I am an artist based out of North Carolina, and today we are gonna talk about the doodle grid method. Doodle grid is a way for you to take a smaller concept sketch and blow it up proportionally, whether that's on a larger canvas, a larger piece of work, or a full-blown mural. Today, I'm just gonna walk you through a small sketch and turn that into a larger sketch on a piece of Bristol paper, but this can be used many different ways to get your work at a different size. After my last mural, I got a couple messages from people saying like, hey, you know, there's other ways to transfer your work on a wall outside of a projector and I was using printouts at the time, charcoaling on the back of them. Traditionally, how people would transfer work is they could use a grid system. Personally, I find it really time consuming it takes a lot of accuracy to put a grid up on the wall with the exact proportions. I found the doodle grid online. It was, I believe, originally created from mural artists using like the textures of the walls. And then it was like a chicken scratch grid, I think from an artist in Australia. And it's kind of evolved now to a doodle grid. I really like using the doodle grid because it is a little more intuitive for me. I'm gonna walk you through it. It's been hot and then cold here. So we're gonna work on a bear today. I'm really excited about this one. So let's take a look. I already have my rough sketch. So right now it's pretty tiny. It's on an eight and a half by 11 sheet. I'm gonna keep on an eight and a half by 11 sheet, but I'm gonna make it the full sheet of paper. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make random marks on the final sheet, so my sheet of Bristol that I'm actually going to do my final sketch on. I've chosen to use letters and numbers. You're going to take a photograph of this. Because it's in pencil, I'm going to throw it in and make some adjustments before I do my overlay. I'm using my computer, so I'm using Photoshop. I've just taken a photo of the sheet of paper with my phone and then imported it in. You can also use your tablet, your phone. There's other programs as long as you're allowed to stack layers and make one more transparent than the other, it will work for you. So after you take your photo and import it into your program or the app, the first thing that I like to do is make sure that things are really squared off. Anytime you take a photo, there's always going to be some sort of skew a little bit. So I just want to make sure that it's perfectly proportioned and not skewed in any way. This is going to be particularly important once you get into larger format, big walls. Um, there's going to be some angles to it and some distortion. Once I have the guides down. I'm going into the image and transform and just scaling so that I'm able to take things in and out to edges just by a smidge. It's not really off by a lot, but those little things, especially once things get a lot bigger, are going to make a huge difference for you. So now that I have everything squared off, because this is pencil, it came in really, really light when I photographed it. So we're gonna go in and mess with the levels and with the curves just to make the marks darker. The really important thing here is we just want the doodles or the marks that we put down to be really as prominent as possible. All right, so now that I have the marks, I'm just taking a bare sketch which I photographed as well and tweaked a little bit the contrast so it would pop and I'm laying it on a separate layer on top of the doodle grid. We are then going to scale it up so the great thing about this is you can kind of decide how big or small you want to get things especially if it is again on an outside mural sometimes we think things need to be a lot bigger than they need to be. I'm using multiply to bring the images that were behind it through the image. As you can see, as I zoom in, you can start to see where those pencil shapes and lines are. So if we look really, really close, we see that like the arch of this nine is over here by his shoulder. We have this L that's over here by his leg, little A over by his nose, and these are really what we were looking for, reference points around the entire image of where these curves and lines need to be. 
So now that we have that, this is our sheet of paper, all of our scribbles on it. We have our reference image that tell us where our bear and our should be now in relation to those scribbles. And we're just gonna start sketching. I really do like this methodology so much better than a standard grid. I've just found that these reference points just in the way that I draw and I illustrate has been super helpful in terms of getting curvature right and proportion right and different shapes. I've done the traditional grid in the past where you would take like a one inch square and make that a one foot square and I always just still seem to second guess myself. So I'm a big fan of this type of transfer as opposed to the traditional grid. Obviously I'm working in pencil so I'm able to go in and erase the doodle once it's in there. If you're working in paint on the wall so you really A need to make sure you have extra paint for the base coat so that you can paint over the doodle grid for parts of the doodle that you didn't use and this is going to be used mainly if you're going to cover the entire mural. This is what the rough sketch looks like. You can see the doodle grid behind it and how all the lines kind of intersect with the points just like it did on my reference photo with the Photoshop file. The proportions are pretty good and I'm really happy with how these came out. I think it turned out really, really close to my original sketch and that's the plan, right? You don't want to have a great reference sketch and then a semi-okay final sketch. That's not where we want to go. So of course I need to like spruce it up a little bit. So I'm going to do my pattern work on here and add a little ink work to it, but I'm really happy with how the pencil sketch came out. So we're just gonna throw some ink in here, outline it out, follow me through, because we got a final one coming up. I actually was able to finish this. It was on location with me a couple different places, and I think that's kind of one of my loves of illustration is that I'm just not locked to one place or another. Hey, yeah, we're gonna work, I need to work. Okay, let's move, relocate, be able to be inside or outside. The freedom and mobility to kind of go where you need to go and still be able to work and create is really important for me. So this is the final sketch. Uh, it is now available on my Etsy shop. If you are interested, please head over and take a look. Thank you guys so much and we'll see you next time.